Hello! Okay, it's been a while. <laughs> We're gonna, today we are going to make a toy stuffed cat. Now I've decided I'm gonna do a few of these stuffed toy videos because that's something I've been asked for a few times. Um, and we're going to start with one that is super, super easy, which is the one we're going to do today, which is going to be a little toy cat. Um, and then we're going to do a couple, one that's more intermediate, but still totally easy if you follow along. And one a little bit more tricky, but again, we'll do them step by step. So this week's video, or this month's video, who knows when we're going to get around to making the others, is, as I said, going to be a little toy cat. Now... In order to make this, you will need the a 24 peg knitting loom. If you buy these in the sets of four, this is the smallest one that you will get in that set. You need the knitting hook um, that usually comes with the set as well, but you can buy them separate. I normally have a really big comfy one. I don't know where it's gone, so I'm using this one today. Um, you will need a darning needle. Um, to help make it all up, you will need either a stitch counter or a pen and a piece of paper to keep track of how much you're knitting, how many rows you're doing. And you will need some super chunky yarn. The reason why we're using super chunky today is because obviously if you stuff a soft toy, it can make, you know, if there's any gaps in the knitting, you'll see them more. So you want something quite robust because knitting done on knitting looms is quite so it, it's the equivalent of using quite a, a large needle so we're going to use super chunky um just a quick shout out these and a lot of the stuff i'm using today came from a company called mariner i know a lot of you guys are watching in the us and canada um mariner are a uk firm but i just wanted to give them a shout out because they have been continuing to deliver right the way through lockdown um, and their products that they make are incredibly good value for for the quality that you get. So I just wanted to give them a quick shout out. We're not sponsored. I just like them. <laughs> um, so yeah, any super chunky yarn will work um, as long as it's, like I say, nice and thick. You can also use like the eyelash type yarn or, you know, the, the craft yarns that are like really fluffy. They would also work very well for this. Um, you will also need soft toy stuffing i went overboard when i ordered this <laughs> i got far too much of this um that is only one bag that came um other things that you don't necessarily really need but are helpful um a crochet hook um any size between like four and six seven ish it's just to help with the cast off it can be easier than using the knitting hook even though you can absolutely use the knitting hook um i also have some buttons that i'm going to use for eyes some thread that's going to match it this is like a, a silk cotton yarn that i usually use for embroidery that i just had around the house that i'm going to use with some buttons to help put the face on and a smaller darning needle um you can use to put the face on. You don't have to give it a face, but you can use anything. You can use the little eyes that you get. You can just sew it on with more yarn. But there's, you know, you can be a bit creative at that point. Okay, I forgot to mention scissors. You need scissors too. Okay, let's get started. What we are going to do is we are going to take our yarn and pop a slip knot in. Now, I know a lot of my patterns, I like working them so they come off the the loom in one solid piece because I hate making up. This, however, is two pieces because it is not worth the extra hassle to have it come off as one piece. It just isn't worth it in this one and it makes it easier. So we're not going to. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is a basic e-wrap on all the stitches and all the stitches on all the pegs. Dun, dun, dun. An A-wrap is called an A-wrap for those who are new here and um, because it basically comes around and back so if you look at it kind of this way up it almost looks like a little letter E in cursive so that's why they're called A-wraps. So yeah I'm going to go all the way around. We're going to push these down 
and we're going to actually work in the flat for this first part so what that means is instead of joining peg 24 and peg 21 and coming straight here what we're going to do is we come we use this as what we call a turning peg so we don't rewrap it we just turn on it and we come back and we put a second stitch going in this direction Okay, so then every peg has two stitches on and all we do is we wrap, is we knit the bottom stitch up over the top stitch and we're going to go around and do that on every single peg. I'm making this look really awkward, aren't I? It's not. I'm just, it's just because of how I'm holding it from the camera. <laughs> there we go. Yep. Okay, so now, obviously that one we don't knit because that was our turning peg. And that is our first row. Now, what we need to do here is a total of 10 rows. So we're going to continue with that working in the flat back and forward for 10 rows. Now, as we come in the second row, because this is, this would be the first peg, but because it's a turning peg, because we're working in the flat, you don't wrap that. You kind of just allow the, you don't come back round. You just allow the, yarn to come off the edge and come back in so if you just remember from here on in every time you start to wrap a row whether it be that way or that way you treat your first peg in that row as a turning peg um, and don't re rewrap it and you're basically going to knit backwards and forwards like that for 10 rows so I'm going to allow you to go off and do your 10 rows and then come back to the video when you've got that far Okay, so I have now done my 10 rows. You can see this is what it looks like. Um, and what I now need to do is to take this as a little rectangle off of the loom. Now, there's a few different ways you can cast off. Um, as I said, you can do this with just the, the knitting hook tool. Um, you can also do it with a crochet hook, which is a little easier Kind of, maybe. I'm going to show you it with both and we're going to figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure this out together. <laughs> as to the easiest way to do this. So, as you can see, as I got so far down, with as I got a few rows in, I just flicked the little um, slipping out that we had off of here. You can do that at any time. It's just really, it's not crucial to leave it on there for a certain amount of time. It's just really to help hold things in place. Okay, so the way we're going to cast off here is by taking a loop off, kind of the last loop next to our, which should be twenty peg 24, so it's the last loop we knitted. We're going to wrap, let me see that, we're going to take the yarn, wrap it around our knitting hook, and then pull the hook up and over, leaving a new, kind of pulling that, uh, this is why we use a crochet hook sometimes. So basically, I'm trying to get it so you can see it really well. So you, you, you're pulling this yarn through the loop. So we're getting our little knitted loop and pulling 
the new yarn through. Now, as you can see, that can be a little bit fiddly with the hook. So, if you use, <laughs> if you use a knitting, if you use a knitting, if you use a crochet hook, it is a lot easier. So, at that point, this is obviously the second one we're taking off. We've pulled a loop through. We then take the loop off the peg and pull try not to get my hands in the way and pull that through then we pull another loop through off the yarn like there yeah so it's basically taking stitch off pull through put an extra loop through like that there and same so literally a stitch comes off and goes on the hook and that gets pulled through and then we've put an extra little stitch using the hook between each one we take off. Okay. So it it is a little fiddly. You can do it purely with this. I'll show you again right there. I'll just get rid of my crochet hook. <laughs> do it there. There we go. Um, so yeah, you can do it. That was one I pulled through. You can do it. It is easier to take the hooks off with this one I suppose in terms of but pulling it through because it's not got that nice little um crochet hook end on it is a little bit more tricky so and you have to kind of make sure you don't catch the two together so yeah there's there's good and bad with it on both sides see so, yeah, I've pulled that too there's good and bad with both. Um, but what I would say is, you can always pull these a bit bigger as well to help you. And then pull it through and then kind of tighten it. Um, so, yeah, there is, you know, there's there's good and bad on each bit. But it's up to you. If you've got the crochet hook, I find the crochet hook easier. You can just do it with this. You can if you're kind of more au fait with general um, knitting or general kind of um, loom knitting. If there is a different kind of um, cast off you want to use, you can totally do that. That's totally fine. Um, so, yeah, there's you know there's there's a lot of different ways you can manage this but i want my crochet hook back i prefer the crochet hook <laughs> especially with this yarn i've done it on other videos with just the knitting hook and it's really easy but because you are working with slightly thicker yarn i do think it is a little easier to just use a crochet hook to to pull things through so yeah just basically keep going around the whole loom like this so you pull a stitch through and then you take one off the loom and pull that through I always make this look harder than it is and it's purely because I'm working around a camera as well. I feel like I should I should say that. So yeah, so you're you're slowly going round the whole loom like this. Okay. And it takes a little while to go round. This is the most tricky cast off we'll use all day to day, and we only use it on this bit. You don't use it on, this is going to be the tail. You don't use this on the main body of the cat. So, you know, a little easier. But, okay, I'm going to let you continue around your loom until you've got this section off and then come back to me. <laughs> 
Okay, I feel like I'm making this look more complicated than it is. So I've decided to try and show you. <laughs> try and work around the camera a little better. Okay, so this is how I do it when I'm not using the camera and it is so much simple. So what I tend to do is I will use the knitting hook to flick the stitch off and then pick it up with a crochet hook. And then you can just... And then pull that one through. See? So it it is... You can use both at the same time to kind of make life a little easier as well. It is less complicated. This is probably the trickiest part of this whole make, is making <laughs> these little... Um, is, is this cast off. And like I say, you can just do it with one or the other, but do it whatever's easiest for you. Like, really, don't make your life more complicated than it has to be. And when you're working with really chunky yarns, like this is extra chunky, it can be a little trickier because, you know, it just is. It just is. <laughs> you don't have as much space between your yarns. It's, yeah, it just, it just can be a little more complicated. We're nearly there. Hmm. Hey, and we're done. We have our piece off. Now, what I'm going to do here is I am going to leave quite a long not massively long, but I want to be able to use this to stitch here all the way along when it comes to making up. So I just want to make sure I've got a good length of it before I cut. There we go. So I have this nice long piece of yarn here that I can use for making up as well. Um, I do use this little bit as well, but that's okay. Okay, so in order to finish this for now, I'm just going to take the long taily bit and put it through pull that through the last loop and just pull that tight and then that is the first little section of our knitting done that actually that cast off once you've done that it's plain sailing from here on out that is the only tricky bit so if you're watching this i know sometimes younger people watch these videos um because loom knitting is nice and easy. You may want to get a adult helper buddy to help with that cast off. But there we go. Okay, for the next section of our make. And I did promise this would be painfully easy. And you're about to see how easy it is. We're going to once again pop a little slip knot in. Pop that on the little keeper. As I say, with these slip knots, you can literally just take them back out at any point. Ah, I've done that. Right. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference, but I like to have my slip knot so the yarn comes out of the side of it. <laughs> that points towards peg one. It's just I just it doesn't make a huge amount of difference if it ends up the other way around. It's just me. <laughs> Okay, so now, this time, we're going to once again e-wrap every single peg. Nice thing about, obviously, for the cast off, the chunk I on is a bit of a pain, but... When you're actually working with it, because it's got that much more kind of natural tension in it, it doesn't tend to spring back off pegs and stuff. So it is, apart from that bit, it is a lot easier to work with. <laughs> okay, now once we've wrapped every peg, instead of going back, what we're going to do is we're going to just come straight to peg one and wrap all of them again. Because this time we are working... Not in the flat, we are working in the round. So we are going to knit a tube 
of knitted fabric. Okay, so I now have a stitch, two stitches on every peg. And so we're just going to literally knit the bottom ones over the top ones on every single peg. You might find this easier as well um, if you work. I don't do it in the videos because it makes it harder for you guys to see. But you can put your looms flat on a surface and knit like that if you find that easier. So you can keep them flat on a surface like this. I don't. I like to have my <laughs> looms up even when I'm not trying to keep them in front of a camera I do tend to have them like up in my hand um but I know some people do find it easier to have that them down on a surface it is entirely up to you okay so that is every peg worked that is our first row what we are going to do now is come back to peg one go all the way around and do another row and we're going to keep doing that just plain a wrap knitted rows for 35 rows three five 35 and i know if you're new you to knitting on a loom you might be looking at that going first of all why did i start it with that cast off <laughs> why did i pick this pattern first <laughs> she said it was easy um but you may also be thinking 35 that's a lot of rows it really isn't it's not at all it will knit very very quickly um, especially once you get into the stride of working with it. Okay, so I'm going to let you go and continue knitting in the round until you have done 35 rows and then I will meet you back here for a much, much easier cast off. I promise. <laughs> okay, so we have now done 35 rows. It looks really long. This is actually going to be quite a short, fat little cat, but um, it does look quite long at this stage. Now, I did promise the next cast off is a lot easier, and it is, but we do want to leave a good length of working yarn to do this. So what I always do is I wrap it round my yarn, my yarn, my loom twice to get a rough idea of length and cut it there. Now you will need quite a big darning needle because we're working with very chunky yarn. Also just a quick warning, we might be about to get invaded by a real cat because Loki has decided what I'm doing is very interesting. So thread this round our large now this one now if you're watching this video i know most people are sensible and watch the whole video through before they start the pattern and knitting along if you really are looking at that earlier cast off like i'm not going to be able to do that that looks too far feet. you can use this cast off um it it means you have to be a little bit more careful with your stitches when you're making up because it can affect you know it doesn't hold the tension as well is um the the calf stuff we used for the tail section but if you're really struggling with it you can use this cast off it won't be the end of the world it'll be fine okay so there are options okay now to do this one vastly easier obviously we're on peg 24 there i'm going to take a needle we're going to come to peg one and we literally push down hook the stitch like that, and pull the yarn through I always get it caught on the other side and then we simply bring it back and come on to the next stitch 
amount of peg too. Push it down, pull it through, and we go around the entire loom in this way until we're back at peg 24. So we just keep going one peg to the next, down and through. Way easier. Like I say, the last one, it, it, it's not as complicated as I made it look working around a camera. <laughs> Give it a try. But if you do get stuck, use this one. Yeah, it'll be fine. Like I know, I know lots of different abilities of knitting watch these videos. So it's 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 good to have options. You can you can always adapt patterns. Okay. The other thing, I know a few of you guys are patrons. Thank you so much for being patrons. It vastly helps me um, make videos. And I know there hasn't been a lot of them lately. Um, there may be a vlog coming out on why that's been. I know some of you are aware of what's been going on. But yeah, it's been a, a bit of a year. So <laughs> literally a year. Um, and I can't do... Anything else interesting on vlogs because we're on lockdown, so I may do a bit of a story time um, one soon. But, yeah, thank you so much. This pattern will be on Patreon, if not as soon as this video launches, within 24 hours. So if you're one of the first guys in and you go to Patreon that's not there, don't worry, it will be appearing. Um, and thank you for remaining patrons throughout the, the last year when things have been quite quiet on here so we're nearly there see how easy this was nope. and you see why you needed to really wrap that yarn around twice and have a good working length because by the time we get all the way around we're going to be almost out of yarn I could have actually done with it being a little bit longer, but that's okay. I can make this work. Almost there. And last peg. That was really just long enough. Maybe wrap it around two and a half times. Okay. There we go. So, that's done. Now all we do is very simply remove the, the stitches and take it off the loom. So, I'm going to start with that peg there. Oh. And just literally come around and lift all of these off. And then we get on to the fun part of shaping our little cat. You're really going to sleep there, Loki. My elder cat, Loki, is currently sleeping literally just out of shot. Just to, just to get him away. <laughs> I'm making stuffed toys to replace you, Loki. These ones don't need fed. They don't try and eat my toes. They don't wake me up at five in the morning to feed them. <laughs> oh, I only playing. I love you, really. Okay, so... No oh, the other cats are actually it's too sunny outside for them. Okay, so oh, the main body of our cat is here. But what we're gonna do is you see, don't pull this too hard, just just took it a little bit just to keep everything nice and neat. And just making sure just through all of those. Perfect. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that there now because there's not a huge amount I need to do with this. The one thing I may do is flip it inside out. Do I need to flip this inside out? No, actually I won't. <laughs> Ignore me. <laughs> Ignore all the craziness I'm saying. Normally I would flip things inside out to work on them, but I'm just going to leave that there. Okay, now I'm going to go back to our tiny tail section. And I'm going to make, I'm going to fix this up now. We don't even actually need to stuff this, <laughs> to be honest, um, because it it's so thick. It's it's it, it doesn't need any stuffing in it. So we're going to sew it up. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is 
and pull that out of there and I'm just going to tie our slip knot piece of yarn to our other piece of yarn just to kind of make sure it's finished off. It's not going to come and done easy, not in this yarn, but I always like to just make sure. So I'm going to pop a little knot in there and then I'm going to take the end of our long piece of yarn and pop that into our nice big darning needle. And the first thing I'm going to do is around the end of this is I'm just going to go around and catch the edge of the rose. Sorry, I was pulling it tight. So yeah, just catch the edge of the rose and then pull. So it closes it up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, this is, it will naturally curl this way. This is inside out, but it will naturally curl like this as you take it, as you have it. So don't, don't fight against it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to literally get our ends and just whip stitch. Whip stitch is basically when you join two edges by just catching the edges and pulling it along like this. And you end up, you can't see it because I'm, stitching with the same colours I'm using but if I was using a different colour you'd get lots of little diagonal stitches across the edge of the piece um, when you're working with yarn this big and chunky it works fine so yeah you just literally catch the edges you make sure you don't tie that in and go all the way along the piece stitching these two long edges together i'm going to do this and then come back to the video when i've got to the very end thanks for that dave thanks i've now got two cats and bathing shot okay so i've stitched it right to the end and that has a cat's tail i'm i haven't tied a knot or anything here because i need i'm going to use the rest of this very long piece that i left to attach it to the main body of the cap but what I need to do now is turn this inside out now I know you're thinking well that's going to be a nightmare so what I do is I get the end of my hook and I go to the end and I just push it and like roll it onto it Ooh. now you might want to use something a bit chunkier use your thumb as well <laughs> and just literally push it down until the other end comes out and then you can hey cat tail he has a cat's tail hey. <laughs> this is going to be our little cat's tail it's going to be very, quite long cat's tail but i like that okay so we're going to put that to one side and we're going to make the main body of our cat now we are going to start at the end, that has our slip knot still in it. Um, and we're going to use that as kind of a centre point. So you squish it down so you've got that there. You don't, it doesn't really matter what you use as a centre point, to be honest. It's not crucial in the making of your tiny cat. Um, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that out. Um, I'm going to secure this with a little knot. And I'm just going to tuck it down inside of the piece because, to be honest, we're not. It's not long enough to use for making up. Even if it was, it we we don't need to do that. And actually, if you pull it, as you see, you've got like almost a little row of arrows here. And just to give that a nice neat edge, you just pull it across and come to a stitch inside the piece. I'm going to use that one, and I'm just going to pull it down, keeping hold of the loop, tie a little knot in there there we go oops sorry there we go and then just turning the top edge of this inside out i'm just going to run this down and just work those ends in and then pull that in and that that's in we've neatened it up there and it's forgotten about but we know where it is it's just there because we've got that little knot. so this kind of gap between stitches there's what i'm using is my middle point and I'm just going to flatten the piece out and flatten them 
and then I'm going to take a piece of yarn it doesn't have to be massively long but you know we're going to do a bit of sewing with it so put a reasonable length on it and I'm going to thread now we're going to do a little bit of sewing and it might be a little hard to see because we're using the same colour thread as what the piece is. Now, the first thing that I want to do is to secure the the inside, it's secure kind of the end of the thread. Now, normally you would just tie not on a piece if you were sewing and it would stay inside. But because we're using knitted fabrics, that can be a little harder. So... What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to I'm going to come about an inch and a half down the piece to about here, and I'm going to come from the inside of the fabric, and I'm going to catch a stitch in some way on the inside. So I'm going to I'm almost going to have to turn this inside out. So. This is easier to do when you're not monitoring where you go. So I'm going to go about here and I'm going to catch that stitch there and I'm going to pull this all the way through to have only got a ditty bit and I'm just going to tie a knot in that and that's just going to hold my end in place on the inside. Okay, and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to find my centre bit. I'm going to push this nice and flat. And I'm going to come, like I say, about an inch and a half down, kind of near where I tied my piece off. And I'm going to bring the needle through. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we are going to stitch a chevron shape like that over these two corners. We're going to do it as a figure eight because I need to close the top as well. So we're going to come up through both sides of fabric across the top we're going to run the needle down and we're going to come back up here and across the top to finish it okay okay so <laughs> actually you can do this another way no let's let's do it a different way you can do it that way but as always i was over complicating things we're going to come up we're going to come down we're going to go straight across the top yeah let's do it that way the way that makes sense lily okay so here we are. Loki is looking intrigued now. So I'm aiming for here. So I am literally, and again, this doesn't have to be perfect stitching. You can just literally running stitch. You can back stitch it. You can running stitch it. I'm going to back stitch it because I like back stitch. It's nice and neat. I'm gonna... It's very thick fabric to work with. Okay, so I'm going to run this up. You want to make sure it's staying neat on the other side as well, though. Just remember that. Where's my middle point? It's there. Am I staying neat? Yes, I am. Fabulous. It's a bit of a big stitch, but it'll be fine. It will disappear into the piece in a minute. So I'm going through and then I'll at the top. Hey. Okay. So that is that bit done. Blends nicely. Now we're going to come back down. So I'm aiming for about here. And I'm working the same way. So I'm coming down. I'm aiming for do, 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 about there. So don't get too caught up with your soft toys being perfect. Nothing in nature is perfect. <laughs> or at least that's what we're going to say when people talk about our imperfect soft toys. I'm on there. I 
I'm hurrying this a little because I don't want the video to go on forever. But you take your time with this. You make them look exactly the way you want them to. You wear my hat on there. Couple more stitches. Am I good? Okay, I'm going to run this time. I've, I've come out here, so as you can see, I've now got the two chevrony bits in. I'm just going to run my thread through and up the inside of the tube. Yeah, so I'm just going to... You can run it through some stitches if you want. To be honest, at this point, it's such a short run. It, it shouldn't make too much difference. And then I'm going to bring it through and I am going to whip stitch again along the top of this so I'm just going to catch the outside stitches on each side and I am just going to whip stitch along the top of this whole piece Does you have to make so much noise, Loki? I'm shooting a video. I'm making a cat as well. Okay, so we're both we're along both sides. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna tie a small knot to secure it. I don't like knots being on the outside, but in this case it's fine. And then I'm literally going to stuff the needle inside somewhere and Get it right the way down into the in so like the needle is inside the middle of this tube and just pull the thread in. Okay, we have done first part of cat. Now we need to get some of our stuffing. Some of our soft toy stuffing. Not loads, just a nice handful. Don't overstuff soft toys. It makes them gappy and weird. So we're gonna take some stuff. And we're going to put it inside, like that. You can see what's happening here, can't you? You can you can see how this is unfolding. <laughs> That's about enough, that handful, actually. Don't over, like I say, you don't want to overstuff them. Do I want a little more in there? Do, do I want a little more in there? I think I might want a little more in there. We'll go for a little more. Little more stuffing, little more stuffing. Da, da, da. Okay. <laughs> Cat head. No, I still want more stuff. <laughs> that's about right. I'm going to say that's about right. Yeah? Yeah, we're going to say that's about right. Yeah. Okay. Then what we're going to do at this point is we're going to take another length. Again, it doesn't have to be massively long, but reasonably long length of yarn. And we're going to go back to our darning needle. And the same thing again, you know, when we put the little stitch on the inside to secure it, we're going to do that again, but you're going to have to come a little bit further down this time. <laughs> So I'm gonna go in. I wanna be nice and I'm gonna go there. Me. And tie that in. Sorry, tie that in. Just put a nice knot into it so it's tied on the inside. And then we're gonna run our needle back out. So I've got it. Without pulling stuffing through. Amio. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we have cat 
we have yarn tied on inside coming through. Now all we're going to do is we're going to run a run, literally a running stitch. So we're just going to out and in all the way around the edge. Literally the full length around this cap. You can see what's happening, can't you? Ooh, sorry, camera. <laughs> is that coming a little lower down? Just slightly. Yeah, make sure you stay kind of in line as you come round. And show you, you're at the right point. There we go. Then all we do is push, making sure our stuffing is all up where we need it to be. Is we're going to take this and we're going to pull. <laughs> this looks like I'm throttling a cat. Pull. And then get needle back on the inside. In fact, we're going to go back to where we tied that knot. It does get a little fiddly at times. Okay. And we're going to find... <laughs> we're going to find that piece that we stuffed down in here and tied off. Or maybe we're not. <laughs> flip it down, flip it down. Da, da, da. Where are you? No. It's disappeared. It's been stuffed in. So we're going to make sure we're stuffing's in. And then we're going to take this. And once again, we're going to tie it. I know where it's not it. Ha ha! Found it. Found it. And we're going to tie. We're going to cut this end shorter so we can actually work with it. Eh. <laughs> and then we're going to tie the two together. Ha ha. See? And that secures it in there. Without any messy ends. Okay, so back to the outside of our cat. I don't know which side I like better. I like this side better. I think he's got more defined ears. I might nip that down. Yeah, we will do that when we come to make his face. Just nip that in. So we have a cat. Cat head. Now we need cat body. I'm sure you can see exactly the way that this is going to go. We then get more stuffing. But before we do that, we are going to take our cat tail with the long piece of working fab yarn on it. And we are going to... Now, you don't want to go right near the bottom, okay? Because we need to close this up. So you want to come not quite halfway up, but about a third of the way up. And this is where you want to be attaching cat tail so take the end of get rid of this bit take the end of the long bit of working yarn left on your tail section and thread that in okay and then all we're going to do is we're going to pick a point to attach this to i'm going to go there I'll come in. Oop. I have not pulled that through enough. And then we're basically going to come around and pick up stitches and just work them through onto the back of our cat here, pulling them nice and tight as we go. before coming through and passing the needle into the inside 
of cut body at which point we are going to once again do the same thing we've done a few times before in this which is find a stitch in here pop needle through tie a nice secure knot and then we're going to work the yarn in by just catching a few stitches pulling it through trimming the end trailing now, <laughs> look, look at little cat. So cute. Okay, now we need to stuff cat body. So, we're going to come back in with our stuffing. And we're going to fill cat body. Is that filled enough? It's quite soft. I think you can have a little more. I'm going to stuff them some. Oh, that's about right, I think. I guess I don't want to overstuff them. Okay. Now, this bit's really easy because remember that cast off we did? <laughs> remember this bit of yarn we've got here? All we do is we grab it and we pull. And we pull. And we just keep pulling until all of the ends come in at the bottom. Ta-da! Oh, see? Perfect tail placement. <laughs> we'll pull that in. And then we'll get a needle. And we'll thread our needle. And again, we just want to make sure we're, um, we're closing this up. So we stand him on his head. Don't know why I've decided cat is a he, but apparently it is now. And <laughs> you see, there's a little hole there. So you just pull it as tight as you can. And then you want to pull a stitch across. So go from one side of that little kind of circle, which you can see there, because you can see the, the needle in it. Pull right through. Pull it nice and tight. Same again. Same again, that time you can see it's closed. And then we have that little stitch there. We're going to come through it. We are going to tie a knot by, get out of the way, by kind of leaving a gap, going through, pull it tight into a knot. We are then, we're going to trim this length right down. So we're going to pull the needle back to about here. We are going to trim the length, so it's only a few inches, keep that bit. We're then going to take needle, push it in, keep pushing with needle until it comes all the way through, up by cat neck, and then just pull. Pull that out, pull it nice and hard, snip it very close to body. And then as you let go, it will work its way back down. Now, <laughs> look, look. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm so happy. Cat. Okay, so. <laughs> His tail makes him stand up as well. It's so cute. Okay, so now, you're going to want to squish him into shape a bit. And I do that by just doing this <laughs> and giving him a nice round body. Okay, the other thing I want to do is nip these ears so they're a little more defined. So I'm just going to take one of the very small pieces of yarn we had off. And I'm going to just literally put a stitch in here and, and stitch it down. Oh, no. Come, come. Like that. 
and I'm going to pull that really tight and I'm actually just going to tie this off at the top and poke the ends back in with a crochet hook so I'm going to tie that really tight I'm going to tie a little double knot in there like that and then these ends I can just stuff back in using either just pushing them in with the end of the needle I can push them back in with the end of my hook I can use the crochet hook to pull them through um yeah there's there's a lot of ways in which you can pull these ends in I'm just going to use my needle to do it because I find that the easiest way the good thing about soft toys you can literally just like <laughs> where you've got loose ends you literally just like embed them into the body of the soft toy never to be seen again but yeah we can do that see now i like this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm gonna pull him there unlike you there <laughs> okay i'm gonna go and because you can't see what i'm doing on camera i'm gonna go and roughly kind of squish this into shape hide all the loose ends literally by doing that and then i come back Okay, sorry if you hear some noises outside, there's a neighbour doing work. Okay, so as you can see, I have shaped the head. I have put, I have took some of the thread I showed you before and I have two buttons. One of them I've already put on here. Now, as you can see, well, I've, I'm using my smaller darning needle. But now I've got one on, I'm going to literally pass the thread straight through to where the other one needs to go on is about there and then I'm going to pull it tight because this will just give our little kitty cat's face just a little bit of shape so we're just going to pull that there <laughs> little kitty cat eye I wanted to use black thread but I don't have any black thread thin enough I think this would work well with black thread because you can put like the little pupil and a little cat's eye with it but that's okay Okay, so then I'm going to take my other button and I'm going to stitch that one on. Again, I'm going to finish doing these off camera because it is so fiddly to work around the camera while I am doing this and I'm going to end up with a cat with a really not good face. Okay, so I will come back to you when I have eyes. Hello. <laughs> right, we have eyes. Now I'm going to take the same thread and I'm going to stitch like embroider a little nose and little mouth on. You can do this. You don't have to do this. You can do this in any style you want. Um, again, I'm just taking this and coming straight through to kind of centre line of the face. Oop, there we go. Um, again, I'm going to try and do this off camera because I'm trying to work around the camera and get this in any kind of a, a good neat pattern is going to be impossible and I'm not the best at embroidery anyway I'm going to call him peppermint okay <laughs> not the best face in the world but quite cute from a distance what I've done is when I've finished doing this I've literally pushed the needle right through and brought it out around the back of his neck um, and I'm actually going to wrap this again it looks like I'm killing a cat all the way around and going to pull it really tight and put a little and, and basically tie it back to itself here um this is purely because i quite like having that it's hardly visible especially on camera but just that it gives a little more definition to the neck and it just kind of adds color you could do this with a ribbon you could put a ribbon on here with a little bell for a little cat's collar that would be really cute too so i'm just going to tie this off again to itself tie that knot in there and then again we're just going to lose the end by pushing it down inside of the stuffed toy itself I just want my needle back <laughs> there we go pull it tight from it lose it and there we have peppermint to cut. I 
can't get him to sit very well on camera. I will take pictures. Ah, oh. ah, oh. look at him. Sit. <laughs> okay, I hope you had fun with this. It was. It's an easy one. People have been asking for ways to make little toys, and this is just a fun, easy one to do. Um, I hope you have fun with it. I'm going to be putting some more kind of toy like tutorials. Obviously, if you're giving these to to kids make sure you're using stuff that they're not going to be able to pull off and choke on and yeah all all of that stuff you know what you're doing you're not stupid okay thank you for watching the video like i say the pattern will be on patreon at some point links in the description i will be back knitting with you again very soon